Now let's turn to Africa, to Tunisia in the north. Tunisia is a country of about 12 million people and yesterday it held an election. The official result is not out yet, but everyone knows what is going to happen. The incumbent president, Kai Saeed, will win a second term. The win is a bit of an exaggeration. Saeed orchestrated a farcical election and will now continue his reign. This may sound harsh, but here are the facts. Kai Saeed became president in 2019 after a real election, which went to the second round, and over half the population had turned up to vote. So far, so good. But then in 2021, Saeed dismissed Tunisia's parliament, promulgated a new constitution, giving himself almost absolute power. He appointed his own Supreme Court judges, his own election commission, and he barred other courts from interfering in elections. Does that sound democratic to you? When the election was announced, 16 people wanted to compete against him. 16 people. All but two were disqualified. And then one of the two other presidential candidates was jailed. And last week, he was sentenced to 12 years in prison. He joined other opposition leaders, critics and journalists behind bars. All this happened before yesterday's election. So you can understand why Tunisians were not very keen to vote. Exit polls say the turnout was less than 28%, which makes sense. Why line up to participate in a farce? Sadly, this story sounds all too familiar. Before 2011, Tunisia was the abode of dictators. Just two men ruled the nation for 54 years. The first was Habib Bourguiba, who ruled for 30 years, until he was overthrown by his own prime minister, Zine al Abidin Ben Ali. Ben Ali became the second Tunisian dictator. He ruled the country for 24 years. But towards the end, something unexpected happened. On the 17th of December 2010, a fruit vendor set himself on fire. He was tired of being harassed by Ben Ali's police forces. He was tired of the repression and humiliation ordinary people went through, so he set himself on fire, this fruit vendor, and his act triggered mass protests. It was dubbed the Jasmine Revolution. The vendor did not survive to see its end. He died on 4th January 2011. And 10 days later, Ben Ali was overthrown. He fled Tunisia and later died in exile. Tunisia's revolution was a success and it did not stop there. Tunisia inspired revolutions all over the Arab world. It started the so-called Arab Spring. Protests erupted from Morocco all the way to Oman. Egypt's president of 30 years, Hosni Mubarak, was forced to step down. A civil war began in Libya, leading to the assassination of their leader, Muammar Gaddafi. The president of Yemen resigned. The prime minister of Kuwait stepped down. There were upheavals all over the Arab world. But in hindsight, nothing seems to have changed. When the Arab Spring reached Syria, President Bashar al-Assad fought back. Hundreds of thousands of people died. Syria was devastated. Thirteen years later, Assad is still president. Thirteen years after Hosni Mubarak's ouster, you have a military general in charge of Egypt. Thirteen years after Gaddafi's death, there are two competing governments in Libya. And thirteen years after Tunisia's Jasmine Revolution, you have Kai Saeed a man jailing his opponents, taking billions in loans from Europe and conducting sham polls. As they say, the more things change, the more they stay the same. First Post decodes the U.S. election, explains how America chooses its president, your primer on the race to the White House, everything you need to know about how America votes, and its global implications. U.S. Election Explained, every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.